Ivan Glasenberg, a former Olympic level speedwalker, billionaire, and the current CEO of secretive mining giant Glencore, the world's biggest commodity trader, once referred to as the biggest company you've never heard of, according to Reuters. The company employed 145,000 people in over 35 countries and has been referred to as the FedEx of the commodities world. What separates Glencore from competitors is their attitude to risk. Glasenberg leads a risky operation who are prepared to go where other companies fear to tread, which includes some of the poorest and most corrupt countries in the world. Glencore often gains access to commodities through long-term agreements, providing financing to cash-strapped countries and companies in return for a share of future output. These deals are often negotiated with the help of middlemen. Let's take a look at how Glasenberg built Glencore. Ivan Glasenberg was born in 1957 and grew up in Johannesburg, South Africa. After graduating with a degree in commerce and accounting from university, he undertook an MBA at the University of Southern California in 1983. He became interested in commodity trading in an unlikely way after observing a man source candle wax from South America and sell it to Japan, all from the comfort of his office. Glasenberg joined Glencore in 1984, which was initially founded as a commodity trader by Mark Rich and Pincus Green. Glasenberg initially worked in the coal department in South Africa and soon managed the Hong Kong and Beijing offices in 1990. He became head of the coal department in 1991, buying mines in Colombia, South Africa and Australia, as well as a number of smelters and refineries. He was later named CEO in 2001. The company itself was renamed Glencore in 1994 after a management buyout. After founder Mark Rich found himself on the FBI's most wanted list due to his failure to monopolise the zinc market and trading illegally with Iran during the hostage crisis. Rich had changed the way oil was traded, creating a spot market that allowed third parties to buy and sell oil outside of the grip of OPEC and other major oil companies. During the early years of Glasenberg's tenure as CEO, the company rode the chinese fuel commodities boom that sent demand for raw materials to unprecedented levels, with China becoming Glencore's biggest customer. In 2008, Glencore gained control of Katanga Mining, providing loans of $265 million during the depth of the financial crisis to keep the country afloat. The loans were later converted into stock, which gave the company a majority stake and the chance to become one of Africa's biggest copper producers. Despite making $2.7 billion profit in 2008, the financial crisis exposed Glencore's partnership business model where the company was unable to buy out partners and a reliance on bank loans saw a risk of defaulting on their debts increased. Glasenberg was left with two options, curtail growth to stop default or push forward with an IPO. With those two options in mind, Glencore sold over $10 billion worth of shares in London's large dev IPO in 2011. Codenamed Galaxy 2, the capital raise allowed the company to continue expansion. The listing at £5.30 per share valued the company at $60 billion dollars making Glasenberg and top management overnight billionaires. Many analysts questioned whether the cyclical commodity cycle was reaching the top. Prior to the float, not many had heard of the company due to their secretive structure, and they began to generate big news. Off the back of the IPO, Glencore merged with major competitor Xstrata for $31 billion in 2013. Glasenberg had previously agreed to merge with the mining conglomerate in 2007. However, the financial crisis put pay to those plans. The merger created a company with 190,000 employees and spanned 50 countries, owning over 100 mines around the world and more ships than the British Navy. Glasenberg won the race to lead the new company, beating former Extrata CEO Mick Davis to the top spot. Glasenberg had to win over the Qatari Sovereign Wealth Fund, who held a stake in Extrata, who could have blocked the deal. Utilising former British Prime Minister Tony Blair to help broker a deal, Glencore agreed to increase their bid by $3.5 billion to seal the deal. In 2014, Glencore attempted to merge with larger rival Rio Tinto, were rebuffed. An attempt to take over Anglo-American also surfaced, but there was no formal bid. In 2015, a crash in commodity prices occurred as Chinese demand slowed, causing shares to fall sharply by 56%, the largest decline since the IPO. The usually reliable trading profits were also down to $1.1 billion from the expected $2.7 to $3.7 billion in previous years. 
this was the biggest threat to the company in its history. They needed to cut debt and do it quickly. Glasenberg was against a rights issue as the hedge funds shorting the company could close out their positions for massive profits. However, with little option, Glencore launched a rights issue in September 2015, announcing a programme to cut $30.5 billion of debt to $20 billion, and they managed to raise $2.5 billion by issuing 1.3 billion new shares. Glasenberg himself put $212 million on new shares to retain a stake. By the end of 2015, Glencore's value had plummeted by $41 billion and is still yet to recover to those levels of the IPO. In recent years, the company has diversified into zinc, lead and silver production, purchased a fifth of Russian oil company Rosneft in a joint venture with the Qatari Sovereign Wealth Fund in a deal worth $11 billion and bought off Dan Gertler's stake in Katanga and Matanda Mining in Congo to take full control for $534 million. Glencore's history with Gertler an Israeli mining tycoon has brought the company into unwanted attention over bribery and corruption. Reports have later surfaced that Gertler funded the civil war in the country and deprived it of $1.5 billion in potential revenue through a string of secretive mining deals. Gertler himself claimed his efforts to bring billions of dollars in of investment to the country deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. In 2020, Tesla agreed a deal with Glencore to supply cobalt to make batteries showing the importance of the reserves that the company had access to. Glencore prides itself on doing business in developing countries which are considered high risk by many of its competitors. Prior to the management buyout in 2002, the firm was investigated for tax evasion, a theme which continues today. In addition to tax evasion, Glencore had reportedly dumped raw acid into rivers in Congo, which Glasenberg was quick to suggest this problem was inherited from the previous owners of the copper extracting facility. They have also contaminated drinking supplies in Zambia, causing many local residents to go to hospital. Dangerously high levels of sulfur dioxide are also emitted from Glencore's plants in Africa. The mining company defended themselves by suggesting they fund schools and local communities, but failed to mention they pay little taxes, moving profit out of Africa and into tax havens, and manipulating copper prices to reduce their tax bills. Reports of using child labour have also surfaced, with children as young as 10 working without safety equipment in Glencore owned mines. In 2021, Glencore has pledged to cut its greenhouse emissions to net zero by 2050. This is a hard task considering how much pollution is emitted by burning coal, oil and gas. The problem for Glencore is their coal stockpile, as investors look towards green portfolios. The company does plan to run down supplies by 2050 and invest into transitional metals such as copper and iron, but this will take a long time. Glasenberg has also recently reinstated the dividend, which was cut due to the pandemic, and leaves Glencore with the company currently being investigated for alleged bribery and corruption in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where it mines copper and cobalt. A number of reports suggest that they have bribed foreign government officials to gain access to the rare earth metals. Gary Nagel, nicknamed Mini Ivan, takes over from Glasenberg at the helm of the commodities giant knowing that a big task lies ahead of him to emulate the former CEO and rebuild Glencore share price that has lagged behind its competitors. He will need to harness the current copper boom and cut debts to ensure that Glencore succeeds in the future. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe as it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And why not drop a comment on what you'd like to see next?